In this video, we're going to be looking at a starred problem, 2.1.28, that definitely lives up to its label as a starred problem. It's extra challenging. In fact, the first time I tried to solve this, I did not have success. But then I persisted, I kept at it, and eventually I had success. I want to actually show you my failed attempt, and then what did I do to fix it to actually have success? Hopefully that would be encouragement to you to keep persisting. It is going to make the video a little extra long, I think but I think it will be worth it. I think you'll learn a lot. It's actually a pretty practical problem as opposed to the more theoretical ones we've been doing recently, though we are going to use the theory actually. We're going to find an equivalent effective annual interest rate when we're given a couple of facts, facts about the present value of an annuity immediate and the future value of an annuity due. This is video number 39. You may want to watch videos 37 and 38 if the idea of an annuity due is unfamiliar to you. So what we have here is a loan. We're borrowing money of 5000 We want to repay the loan, repaid by payments of 117.38 at the end of each month for n years. So there's 12 n payments total, one each month for n years, starting one month after the loan is made. So the loan, you can say, is made at time zero. You're going to start the payments at time one in months. And so you can think of the 5000 as the present value of an annuity immediate. At the same rate of interest, 12 n monthly payments of 113.4 accumulate to 10,000 one month after the final payment. So we're evaluating the future value of these payments to be 10,000 one month after it. That's really thought of as being an annuity due instead of annuity immediate. We're going to find the equivalent effective annual rate of interest is the goal of the problem. I did start this problem by making a timeline. It's not a bad idea. So there's time zero, here's time one in months, then time two, then time three, etc. This is 12n minus one months, and here is 12n months, 12n months or n years. We've got these payments of 117.38 starting at time one, one month after the loan is made at time zero. The present value of this payment stream at time zero is going to be equal the loan amount, 5,000, for whatever the interest rate is. The last payment is made at time 12n. We can write down the equation 5,000 equals 117.38. A sub, okay, that we're gonna initially think of it in terms of a monthly interest rate, 12N payments with monthly interest rate J. I will be the effective annual interest rate we'll ultimately solve for, but J is going to be the monthly rate. Let's write that over here. J is the monthly rate. I is the effective annual rate. That's what we want to solve for. 1 plus i should be the same as 1 plus j to the 12th. Therefore, i should be 1 plus j to the 12th minus 1. If I can figure out j, or if I can figure out 1 plus j to the 12th, then I can find i, I can finish the problem. You also have the payments of 113.4, accumulating a future value of 10,000 one month after the final payment. It doesn't say what time these payments start. Do they start at time zero? Do they start at time one? That's a little bit confusing this way. But what you need to realize is it really doesn't matter when they start. You're evaluating their future value one month after the final payment. It's perhaps easiest to think of it as starting at time zero so that we end up evaluating the future value at time 12n. But in the big scheme of things, it actually doesn't matter. So here's our 12N payments of 113.4. We evaluate it in time one month after at time 12N. The more important thing is 10,000 is the future value of this income stream or this payment stream as an annuity due. So I use the S double dot notation. 12N payments, J is again the monthly rate. So the first thing I did when I had this information, besides doing what I showed you here, was I solved for A and S double dot. 
So take 5,000 and divide by 117.38 to solve for A. And let's go ahead and write out all those decimals. We probably can get away with fewer, but I always am a little extra careful about these things. So A, 12N, with interest rate J, is 42.5966945. Double check that I copied that correctly. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's solve for S double dot. 10,000 divide by 113.4. There's S double dot. S double dot 12N J is 88.1834.2152. Okay. My initial thought here now was to use the formulas for these things to see what happens. And I, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, S double dot, the formula for that in terms of the closed formula for a finite geometric series involves D, the discount rate. And I don't think I want to bring D into play. I will be bringing V into play, the discount factor, because that's more quickly related to J. But I think I wanted, I, I wanted to relate this more to annuity immediate instead of annuity due. And the, the easiest way to relate it to annuity immediate is to say it's equal to 1 plus J times S12N. So that seemed like the best thing to do initially. And we will see that this approach, while it seems good at first, does lead to a situation where you can't really finish the problem. And that was how I failed, was I was not able to really finish the problem. This is the same as 1 plus j. Um, use the formula for this as 1 plus j to the 12n minus 1 over j. This is the same as 1 minus v to the 12n over j, where v I'm going to take to be 1 over 1 plus j, not, not 1 over 1 plus i. I'm going to take v to be 1 over 1 plus j. So I looked at the, this equaling this and this equaling that and saying, well, you know, maybe I should divide one equation by the other to cancel the j's in the bottom. Ultimately, we want to solve for j. Maybe it's still possible. If I can solve for j, uh, then I can also solve, well, then I can also solve for i. If I can find v to the 12n or, or 1 plus j to the 12, 12n here, excuse me, there's a typo. 1 plus j to the 12n, that's going to help me solve for j as well. Those are two things I could try to do. So again, I, I divided one equation by the other, this equation by that equation. The j's in the bottoms canceled. What happens with the numbers? 88.1834152 divide by 42.5966945 is that. So what does this give us here? We get 2.070194 equals this divided by this. The j's cancel. I get 1 plus j times, in parentheses, 1 plus j to the, 20, uh, to the 12n minus 1 divided by 1 minus v to the 12n, but v is 1 over 1 plus j, so I can write it like this. And then I I thought, hmm, maybe I should multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus j to the 12n. Like this. That'll help get rid of that fraction there, if nothing else. There we go. I multiplied the top and the bottom by 1 plus j to the 12n. Then this thing right here is the same as 1 plus j to the 12n times in parentheses 1 plus j to the 12n 
minus one, and then I could cancel this with this, and I could ultimately say that all this simplifies to one plus j, add these exponents, the 12 in there and the one there, to the 12n plus one. Then I thought, okay, if I can solve this for one plus j to the 12n, then I can, I can probably finish the problem here. Because that can help tell me v to the 12n, which can help me solve for j. But this plus one is a problem. I mean, yeah, I mean, how are we going to solve this equation for one plus j to the 12n? Because it's this is one plus j to the 12n times one plus j. It's it's not it's not clear how to do it. I mean, maybe there's a possible way to do it. But what I did was that at that point was I said, okay, maybe my original approach should be modified. That was my point of failure. And if if you think of a way to solve it from this point. Uh, without the approach I'm about to show you, then go ahead and send me a note or something. I, I felt like I was stuck, I, and I'm still looking at this and thinking, this doesn't seem like I can solve for 1 plus j to the 12 n, because I don't know j for one thing. So, what I did instead was that I looked at this, this equation in a different way. Let me draw another timeline here. When I'm looking at this equation, I'm ignoring the payments of 113.4. Those are already taken into account. I've got payments of 1, whose future value I'm evaluating at time 12n, like that. Uh, actually, what I ended up using was an equation from the, from the last video, video number 38. And here's how, here's how to think of it. I like to rate, get rid of the double dot again still. Can I relate this, uh, the future value at this moment in time of this annuity to the future value at the same moment in time of this annuity, which would be then annuity immediate instead of annuity due? And the answer is yes, you can relate them. And again, I, I talked about this in the very last video, number 38. Um, this is an extra payment for the red annuity compared to the black annuity, and the red annuity forgets to include, so to speak, this first payment. So I can relate these. I can say S12n double dot would be S12n without the double dots minus the one extra payment at time 12n, whose value at time 12n is 1 plus add back in the payment from time 0 promoted in time to 12n, its future value at time 12n is going to be 1 plus j to the 12n. And I also said to myself, hmm, if I can even get a in here, a12n, that might make it even simpler. So that was the insight that I had. Let me replace s12n with 1 plus j to the 12n times a12n. I can write it like this. This all has to equal 88.18342152. Come back up here. And I already know A12n is 42.5966945. This thing is 42.5966945. Uh, oh, I forgot the typo. I forget another typo. This should be in 12n there. So I'm looking at this and saying, hey, this is an equation I can solve for 1 plus j to the 12n. By the way, this is something separate here. Separate those. Let me add 1 to both sides and factor out a 1 plus 12n. I get 1 plus j, j to the 12n times in parentheses. 42.5966945 plus 1 equals, add 1 to both sides, 89.18342152. And this, of course, is 43.5966945. So it looks like 1 plus j to the 12n is going to be this divided by that. Let's see what that is. 
89.18342152, double check that I typed that right, divide by 43.5966945. One plus j to the twelve n, which by the way is the same as one over v to the twelve n, is two point zero four five six four six four one. That's what this shows. Take its reciprocal to get v to the twelve n. V to the twelve n is the reciprocal of this thing, one over it, 0 0.4888430. We're almost done. Now go back up here, plug in 0 0.4888430 right there, solve for J. J is going to be um, 1 minus 0 0.4888430 divided by A12N, which is 42.5966945. Subtract this from 1, divide by 42.5966945. J is about 0 0.01199992. Probably could round that to the 0 0.012. Now we're almost done. I is going to be 1 plus j to the 12th minus 1. So add 1 to this, raise it to the 12th power, subtract 1. I, the final answer, is about 0.1539. And that is correct. So that was quite a problem. Again, I felt stuck here. Maybe I'm missing something. It's possible. I, I do make mistakes. It felt like I couldn't solve the problem from this point. So I turned back and used another approach, used this equation from the last video, which I also write, rewrote in terms of the A's. So I persisted, and I hope you can persist on such problems too.